Black Dragon Black News. He's on YouTube. Black Dragon Black News. Get yourself educated by his books and you'll learn how to make Black Dragon Black News. He covers it all. So click on the screen, hit subscribe to get updated Black News with MC Protocol. A lot of phonies popped up when this YouTube Black News craze came about. But the man on this channel is the first to do it and the only one that never sold out. His name is Black Dragon. Talking to me, the kids to see Reverend Uncle Sam. They traded that uniform for the best from the Mighty Black Sabbath. Not the band, I'm talking about the Mighty Black Sabbath. MC. We're painters, dudes, and the artists, stripes. From the prospect all the way up to national P. All the copycat creators and the content stealers and haters. There have been many, but there's only one larger than life. Like Michael with the cowboy hat, the nose come through and just gets skinny. Black Dragon, Black and News. He's on YouTube. Black Dragon, Black and News. going on here i can't hit any buttons the right way <laughs> man uh anyway i'm black dragon and uh welcome to black dragon biker news network biker news you can trust and as always i'd like to thank you all for tuning in for wherever it is in the world that you happen to be uh man listen we don't often get here in the afternoon but i just want to tell you it is just today is an exciting day because uh what we're going to do is we're going to be having a hell of a lot more uh, guests and stuff from all over the biker world, people that are doing stuff from South Africa all the way to Texas. And uh, we want you guys to, to, to just enjoy the really great people that we're bringing to you from the biker news world. So uh, this time today, we're going to have somebody that's really cool. And um, uh, I can't wait to you guys meet him. He uh, has like one of the, like a huge, like one of the hugest uh, uh, um, um, TikTok um, uh, followings for for someone in the biker world, and uh, and I I found him uh, uh, maybe a year ago or so, maybe a year, maybe two, something like that, year and a half ago. I started following uh, this guy on TikTok, and uh, I just I've been following his progression, and 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 watching him and, and everything and, and pattering a lot of my TikTok after him uh, because he's so successful over there, like half a million, damn near half a million subscribers. And uh, uh, I kind of like uh, a lot of the stuff he does. Uh, he has a similar amount, if not more haters than I do. So that's interesting. And, uh, and, and so just to watch how he handles all that and uh, the, the way he uh, picks subjects and the things he talks about and MC protocol and, all kinds of stuff. So uh, they call him your favorite biker, uh, and uh, his name is Gray. And I just want you guys, like, like uh, I want you to give him a warm welcome. Let me show you guys this real quick here as uh, as I'm, uh, I guess I should have queued that up, man. I got to do better out here, people. Um, but um, this here is his um, TikTok uh, page. So uh, he, uh, you know, he's got 439,000 subscribers, 3.3 million likes, man. Uh, he he started the Shoot a Deuce. I forgot about that. He started the Shoot a Deuce program, and uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, I forgot all about that until I was just reading that right now. So this is uh, your favorite biker. His name is Gray. Please uh, 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 help me welcome him to the show. So what's up, man? Hey, Black Dragon. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks for uh, having me on tonight. I appreciate it. Man, I tell you what. Um, so let me just say, let me just say this um, to start off with. Uh, people meet me all the time, and uh, they get really uh, giddy and everything, and they're like, "Oh my God, I'm meeting Black Dragon," and I'm like, "Oh man, it, it, don't do that. It's nothing." But I feel that way right now. I feel giddy, like I'm meeting. I, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same one. <laughs> I'm like, I'm meeting your favorite biker. Like, I, I, I want to, I don't know. I'm not going to throw any panties at you or no shit. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, you know what? I've, 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 uh, 
I've had, I've actually got one of your books in my house. I've known who you are for years and uh, yeah, no, I'm, it's, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Wow, man. That is really cool. Thank you, man. Uh, so, Hey, uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to talk to you about. First of all, I, I want to introduce you to my my folks that are here and everything. And um, there's just so much I've been wanting to talk to you about for all this time. First, I got to tell you, you've helped me out immensely just watching you and your professional get down as a content creator uh, on TikTok, which is a new platform for me. Um, and just watching how you handle things, how you don't really curse a whole lot, if ever. Uh, how you're very careful with keeping your um your 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 channel monetized and 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 up and running and not not uh you know hit uh like it's a hard TikTok I think is the hardest platform to to be on. Uh, it's, it's rough. It's rough. So I want to talk to you a little bit in the beginning about being a content creator. Um, and, and some tips you would give content creators, people that we got so many people that watch us that want to get into this and they think it's very easy. And so can you, can you give some, some, you know, tips and, and talk to us a little bit about it? What got you into it and all that? Yeah, kind of sure. yeah. So for me, um, it really was just a kind of a coincidence type of deal. I, I was telling some jokes out here by the pool and, uh, and the old lady recorded it and, and put it on TikTok and it went viral. And uh, and then they started telling me you can monetize with this. And that was around the same time that COVID was going on. And so, um, you know, um, I started I got into it and started making it happen. Um, it started off it started off fast and then it gets slow and then it kind of speeds up and then it gets like it, it, it's just there's a pattern to it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So what is your what, what are like your three top um, your three top uh tips that we give someone that's trying to become a a creator uh, yeah you know the the very first tip that i give people if if you've got decent content and you come to me and ask me how can i make it how can i make it better how can i make it take off i tell people get the very best camera you can get the, the very best one you can afford with the highest you know, I, I'm not I'm not that technical guy. I actually had my son go and buy mine because I don't I don't know. It. But but get like the very best one you can afford. Uh, get a microphone, get some lights and um, and don't plagiarize, you know, be original. And uh, and that alone, if you put it out regularly, you know, no matter what, if it's comedy or if it's educational or um you know, religious, whatever it is, whatever your subject matter is, if you do it regularly, then then you will regularly gain followers. But if you give up on it, just like any, anything else, then you know, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna be successful. What would you say about um, following the rules of the particular um, um, uh, agency or 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 platform? Um, yeah. What, what do you say about that? You know, the rules, the rules can be confusing, right? Because because right. they've got it all spelled out in black and white for all of these platforms. However, they'll hit you with that. You broke community guidelines deal. And you'll be like, well, which <laughs> community guideline did I break? <laughs> I don't know what I did. What did I do? Right. Um, what I've learned over the last few years is to, to pretend that, that about half of your audience is is like fifth graders right like like elementary school and uh and keep it as clean as possible like you if you were talking you know to your to your nephews you know in in front of your brother or your sister like how would you talk to them mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like treat them like family and and be courteous to the audience and and, and keep it clean that that tends to um to get you you know higher on the algorithm um what do you think about this this push from Congress to get rid of TikTok? Do you find TikTok dangerous? I mean, you 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 definitely make money there, uh, but yeah. is it dangerous to America? You think? You know, I think it's a joke. The whole the whole thing. So that that ban, you know, the famous TikTok ban. It's not just about TikTok. It's a it's a restrict act, right? So to restrict the internet, 
And there's so many ways they can use that bill to restrict lots of different apps. I think it's a very dangerous policy. I'm glad that the Senate has chosen to take their time about it. You know, Congress rushed it through and uh, they, they declared an emergency vote and all that. And they rushed it through. The Senate has decided to be procedural about it. And as it comes to the floor, they're going to vote on it, but but they're going to do the whole, you know, X amount of hours of debate and such forth. And a lot of senators are seeing how the people reacted to their congressmen. And they're now they're all, they're all second guessing it, right? And so I think that the push is to wait for the Senate to uh, to vote until after the next election is what I'm thinking. I think if they can push it to the next election, uh, I don't think it'll go through at all because uh, whoever the next president is, I don't I don't think they'll vote for it. I really don't. After this election, when they see how many people in Congress. Are going to argue, man. Congress is going to take a hit this year. There's going to be a lot of people that vote against whoever it was. There's going to be a lot of congressmen shocked. And and when after that happens, the Senate's going to be like, "Hey, man, I don't want my name attached." I really do think that's going to happen. Right. Um. So you spent you spent some time in the uh, military armed service. Thank you for your service. Um. Hey, thank you for your service, Mister Submarine. Now, it was my honor. You know, I'd do it again if they'd let me. Yeah, you know, I would, too. I, I would, too. Um, so you were a Coast Guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and so how many years did you do in? See, I was uh, 99 to 03. Yeah. Okay. So so I I, um, I heard you talk about um, your your job uh, in, sa- in safety and, and – uh, and, search and uh, rescue. Search and rescue, which uh, I did search and rescue as a young man uh, for the American Red Cross, and uh, then when I when I joined the uh, Navy, uh, I was kind of sick of search and rescue, and I went into submarine service. But we had um we had this thing where I, if I had known about the Coast Guard, I probably would have went in the Coast Guard and continued. I hear that all the time. My, all the time. Yeah, my search and rescue uh, life, um, especially after watching Rescue Swimmer and. All those movies, you know. Um, so, yeah, when I went in, that was before all the movies came out, and it was really easy to get into the Coast Guard back then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you talked a little bit about, uh, and I, I wanted to do this video right after you did it because you talked about if someone were to fall overboard, mm. and uh, some of the things you talked about were some of the things that we did uh, because we we were our own search and rescue out there, and we had man overboard drills. You know, yep. if a man falls overboard, and you know, man overboard port uh, side or starboard side, and you know, there was a few things we did. Like if you fell over on the port side, there was a hard t- turn on the rudder to the port. Yeah, they call it a winds. What do they call it? Winds, Windsor turn, something like that. Winds. I forget what they call it. Williams, Williamson turn. Williamson turn. So. Your the butt end of the boat will scoot out, and you talked about you know getting sucked down through the the screws and stuff like that. And I, you know, I was just like, you know, what a kindred spirit to have gone through, you know, being part of the sea protection mm-hmm. of the United States Navy or 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 Department of uh, Transportation. Isn't that who you guys were, Department of? Yeah, when I was in, um, actually, I was under three different departments because I was in de- when 9-11 happened, right? So it was uh, Department of Transportation, and then we went under DOD, and then uh, Homeland Defense. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, so what was your, what was that like for you? What was your overall, what did you come out with from that? You know, I was really young, and, uh, you know, when you go into it, for me, I went into it because I didn't want to be bored. I wanted to go into the service and and I didn't want to be bored. And my father was in um, several different branches. He was uh, he was Army, Navy and Coast Guard. And so his favorite branch was the Coast Guard. And um, so I took that in consideration. But but every day when I went in, it was peacetime. Right. So that's when Clinton was president. It was uh, peacetime. And I talked to everybody from all the other different branches that I knew. And I, and I asked them, like, what do you do in the morning? When you wake up in the morning, like run me through your day. Right. And, and frankly, it was just a whole lot of digging holes and working out. <laughs> you know I mean? like, 
And I, it didn't sound like fun to me. And I talked to the Navy guys. And every time I would talk to the Navy guys, most of them, with the exception of the submarine guys, they would say, man, we, we only go to sea like six months every three years. It's, it's no big deal at all. You, you're never even going to be on a boat. It's going to be. And I'm like, well, I would, why would I join the Navy if I'm not going to be on a boat? Like, what do you do? You paint all day? And so uh, when I talked to the yeah, Coast yeah, Guard, you yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> when I talked to the Coast Guard, it was different. They were like, man, you know, so we wake up in the morning. You know, as soon as the red lights start going off, you know, <laughs> you never know what time it's going to be <laughs> and you never know what you're going to be doing. So that that was exciting. Now, I heard you 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 talked about there's two functions. There's the the law enforcement side and the rescue mm -hmm. side. And mm -hmm. and you well, were and there's more about, huh? second. Uh, you were fortunate enough to do both sides. Yeah, so I did. Um, I didn't really do the law enforcement side. So I was, um, I was uh, search and rescue, and I did the uh, a black hole also. So the black hole, that's the ones that do um, like buoy tending, like they fix buoys, ranges, solar panels. I did that for about a year. Uh, when I got onto the cutter, I didn't. I didn't have uh, you know the law enforcement qualifications and all that. I never went to the Leo schools or any of that. Okay. I, uh, that's what I, I was, to yeah, Sorry yeah I, I was a navigator. I did, um, I was on the bridge. I was a QMO quartermaster of the watch, you know, ah. most of the time. So yeah. 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 So that's a navigator in, in the coast guard. Cause a, a, a quartermaster is, um, is a supply person in the army. So I didn't know if the yeah. coast guard was, so for us, that's navigators too. So I was a uh, fire control, but I, I had a lot of navigation functions. And uh, so one of the, the the functions I had was was the man overboard. I manned what we called the um, oh my goodness the plot. I forget the name of that plot. And you would you would plot the bearing of the person so that when you did this big turnaround, you could get back to them and and stuff like kind that. Kind of have an idea, yeah. yeah okay. Kind of, have an, yeah. 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 It, did you hey, did you ever did you ever do one where they threw the orange barrel overboard and you got to go find it? No. No, we never did that. Like we were, hey, it, it would mess you up to know how often they can't find them. Oh, <laughs> it oh. would mess you up. Hey, they take a big orange fifty-five gallon drum and they chunk it over the ship, and they do the turn and all that, and they have people pointing at it, and they got the navigator, everybody's plotting it, and they get to show the bit, the boat turn around, and they can't find it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah dude. No, it's not as easy as people think. Not as easy as people think. Yeah. So, um, you, what did you learn, um, from the Coast Guard that you would say that you have applied, uh, as a leader of a motorcycle club, uh, in, or in the yeah. motorcycle club nation? Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, you know, a lot of the guys that I ride with are, are veterans. I think that that's really common. And, um, and that military bearing that you pick up. You know, people pick up on that and it and it will help you to to move up through ranks in, in any any motorcycle club. That military bearing is going to help you move up if, if, if you still have it. A lot of people lose that bearing, you know, and I don't have as much as I used to. But even just a little bit of military bearing will, will help, uh, you know, help you gain a little respect. So when um when. When I first met you, you were a part of another organization that mostly was on the East Coast. It was mm -hmm. a, a, when I first saw you, uh, yeah. and it was a, a one percenter outfit on the on the East Coast. And I, I really mm -hmm. thought you were in the East Coast. I had no idea you were in like Texas. So um, yeah. when I first started seeing you and everything, uh, and I realized, okay, this guy's a one percenter. So uh, I've heard so many things about things and. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to talk to you about some differences and in, in, in some things that you've seen in the one percenter community that are different, particularly than um, you would you would see in, in my community. You know, what's it like to be a one percenter? These kinds of things, these questions that come up all the time. So yeah. uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, so you're a one percenter that does social media. And I, I hear a mm -hmm. lot of negative things about that. And I'm sure you've been through that hell. So. What, what would you say about that and, uh, you know, that sort of thing? You know, I would say that some of the some of the most well-known one percenters that, that have ever been, you know, were wrote books or, or did television or movies. Right. And we don't have to say their names. 
we, we all, anybody that's anybody knows, right? Um, I don't bring my club into it. And a lot of those guys did. And, yeah. and some of those guys caught a lot of slack from their organizations. Um, I don't catch a lot of slack from my organization, the, run, the guys that I run with, because I don't bring our club, the club I run with, into it. I don't, I don't wear the patch in front of the camera, and I don't talk about what happens at our table, and I don't talk about what happens internally. And that's how you get yourself in trouble, you know, or, you know, picking fights with other clubs on social media. I mean, that'll – That'll get you right. I mean, that's you know, nobody. Nobody wants a bro out there picking fights with people all over social media. Um, and I see that with some of these guys. But no, nah, that's that's uh, there's just what there's a certain way to behave. I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to be professional about it. So, do you buy into this this thing where they say you're exposing what we do to the world? And if no, it for you, I really there, don't, because because there's so many of us. And I mean, and. and Everybody, you can look up, like, just Google almost any club and Google their bylaws. You can probably find it. Like you can, you know, <laughs> almost any club. Like, and if I can Google your club and I can find your, your actual bylaws online somewhere, like, is it a secret anymore? Like, is this – I mean, what do, you, what do you want me to <laughs> – so, so, no, I don't think that talking about the culture or the lifestyle is giving anything away. Because it's all public information. You can look it up for almost any club that you could think of. So, yeah. What do you do about, what do you do about the insane haters you pick up? As a, <laughs> have you ever had like death threats or anything like that? Oh, yeah. No, I, you know what? I have. Um, I've been attacked. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get all into it. But, <laughs> but I, um, no, I've, I've had some crazy things happen. Um I uh, I normally block haters just like as soon as they start getting profane or bullying my followers, I just block them. Um, I don't normally block people for challenging my ideas or starting a debate, but if they get out of line, I just I just block. You can tell, you know what I mean. Yeah. If, if somebody's just being vindictive and mean and whatever, I, I just I just block them, and my account has never suffered. I, I just I gain. New followers every day, you know, and every month. And and I've got a huge, huge list of people that are blocked. I mean, it's literally thousands. And uh, I, probably probably minimum five people a day I'll block, you know, and or, or you know, whoever's moderating. I'll have people go through, them, you know, but we just, just block it. You know? yeah. So I got to tell you, when I, I was really at a very low point, I was in, incredibly depressed. I was had a lot going on with, with hater after hater it was at a very rough juncture for me uh and you didn't even know me and i i sent you either you sent me a message or i sent you one um and you I, it was when i was really going at it with some guys and you were like block them oh i i know what happened i saw your video about blocking people and i sent you a message and you came back block them just block them. And, and hey, I was like, wow, it'll you save that? you a lot of headache, man. Just, just block them, get them out of it. Let them, let them make new accounts and keep hating. And just, and just block them too. You know? <laughs> and, I, was, I can't believe you can do that. Can you, like, I thought it was almost like there was an anti block machine button on me. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> I was, you I don't have more. to subject yourself to the hate, man. You, you don't have to. Like, the way I look at it, when I make my content, it's, it's 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 my room. This is my studio. This is my office. This is my show. And if you come into to my show and get on my thread and change my vibe, you're done, dude. I'm you're, you're out. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let you ruin the show. You know what I mean? And that's how I look at it. And it's just to me, it's professionalism. Why would you let a heckler stand in the room when you're doing an act? You wouldn't. Security would drag them out. Yes. I have no problem blocking people. Yeah. Because they're there to see you, not the exactly. not the heckler. Okay, so uh, we'll do some stuff here. So I want some opinions. I'll make some statements. I want some opinions. So uh, statement one, the motorcycle set isn't what it used to be. Um, and uh, everything is going south. Why? You know, I think it I think it depends on how you look at it. I really do. I think you know there's a there is a positive, there's some positive things going on, like 
like the clubs are sobering up, which is all kinds of groovy. So, you know what I mean? Like pretty much every club now won't put up with an addict, won't put up with a junkie. And I just think that's fabulous. Uh, that used to be a huge issue. There will be certain crews I wouldn't even want to be around. I'm like, dude, I don't even want to go over there and deal with that. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so they're sobering up, and that's good. But, but I think that you've got a lot of young guys getting into this set that really don't have a clue. They're starting up clubs, and they don't have a clue. You know, and I would never mention a club's name, but I've, I've seen new clubs, and they don't even know what a real sit down is. They don't even mm -hmm. know. You know what I mean? You you ask them, hey, I need your top three. We're gonna do a little sit down, and they're like, what What do you mean? What What is it? And it's like you guys have been riding around with patches for two years. You've never had a sit down. You don't know what a sit down is. You know what I mean? It's like, where am I? Where am I? Where, what are we doing here, guys? You know. What I mean? But but you get that. You you get guys, and you close the door behind them, and they just start shaking. They they, they don't have any idea that you just want to talk, and um, and. It, it makes you want, there's a lot of young guys that probably shouldn't be running a club that are, right. and they're kind of screwing up the whole scene. They're getting us all kicked out of bars and, you know, they're, they're screwing it up for everybody, you know, cause there's no professionalism. Uh, statement. There's too many pop-up clubs. If you want to join a club, you should rather join one that, that that's there. You shouldn't start your own. What do you think? hundred percent. I, I agree. And, and if there's a club in your city or County, and you haven't tried to join them or you don't like what they're doing. That's, you know, maybe you don't like them. Maybe it's a, maybe they're doing things you just can't stand. But if, even if you don't like them, you should probably talk to them before you start a club up. You know what I mean? And, and be respectful. That way, at least your new club doesn't have a whole bunch of problems right off the bat, you know, but you know, you got towns that have got 15, 20 clubs in one town. That doesn't make any sense to me. You couldn't find a home. Yeah, you had to go and make the twentieth one, right? Yeah, <laughs> the other nineteen, yeah, no, no good. Uh, yeah. We got to make a twentieth. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Why do that? But people do it all the time. Today, somebody's doing it. They're picking up their patches right now. And <laughs> hey, we're gonna get them sewn on this weekend, guys. It's gonna be great. You know. Yeah. Uh, I've always felt like. I just don't care. I, you know, it's for me. Uh, I think the more motorcycle clubs, the better. Ninety-five yeah. percent of them ain't gonna last. No, uh, they won't. So, you know, I don't get all into. You know, I'm just kind of like. Phew. Yeah, you know, like I said, the only the only real issue I have with it is you get guys doing it that don't know what they're doing, and then they make the rest of us look terrible because they go out there, they screw up the whole scene, and and they don't know what they're doing. And it's like, man, you're supposed to, at the very least. Most people that start a club that's successful have ridden with another club for 10 or 15 years before they do that. And then they have a group of solid guys, you know, but if you don't know what you're doing, man, you just at least figure it out first and, and not just by reading books. It's great a reader or writer as you are that, you know, you got to get your hands on and, and learn how to do it. I, mean, I say that in every book I have. I say, uh, I say that in every book, like, first of all, please do not, Run out and tell anybody Black Dragon said, please don't. <laughs> hey, and they will too. They'll say, I read it right here. <laughs> they walk you know? in the meeting with that. But you know, he's not in our club, right? You know, <laughs> you do know he's not in our club, right? Like, oh, okay. So that's not how everybody does it. No. And I, I try <laughs> to say that when I, I write that. Uh, one other thing I write in my books, almost every book I'll write. I'm not a one percenter and I ain't speaking for them. And if you're a one percenter, shut the book right now and throw it away. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I've read I've read some of your stuff. I really have. You know, um, I don't watch a lot of TV. I read a lot um, and, and anything informative. You know what I mean? But you got a lot of stuff in there for guys that, that are new on the scene. But, you know, you, it's definitely you definitely want to get your hands dirty and get in there and and earn a patch somewhere before you start your own club at the very least, I would say. So um, do you think channels like these help? Do, do you think we're educating anyone or are we, are we just entertainment? Um, you know, I think it's all three. I think that some people despise it. I think some people love it. And then, and then you got other people that are just entertained that, that don't ride bikes and never will. And they just think I'm cute, you know, and, and they want to watch because I got big blue eyes. You know, they, 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 they like the gray beard. 
good. I want, hey man, I, I'm trying. How many years does it take to get this thing? <laughs> you know, hey, it would it would upset you if you knew. Do you know that um you can actually look on my channel and find videos that are less than two years old and, and mine's as short as yours? Wow. Yeah, it would yeah. upset me because I've been trying now. I think I'm on my ninth month of this thing. So oh, yeah. you well, you're hey, that's a great start, man. Nine months now, dude. Yeah. yeah. In two yeah, or three I'm, years, you'll be as long as mine. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm nine months at this thing. So um um patch policing. Uh, yeah. What do you think about that? You know, I'm not a big fan of it. I always like to give respect, give respect kind of deal, you know, until somebody gives me a, a reason not to like them. I'll normally like them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I don't I don't really like you. I mean, I'm not a big fan of new pop up clubs and all that, but I'm not going to hate on them just because they popped up. I'm not going to walk up and go take that off. You know, that. <laughs> some people will. But, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask them, you know, I'll introduce myself. I'll get to know them, you know, maybe buy them a beer, figure out who they are, but I, I won't hate on them. You know? Oh, so we just got a question. This is, this is, this is interesting. Um, yeah. I know what I would say, but can you ask his opinion on a small group of like-minded folks sharing a patch, not as an MC, no MC cube or bottom rocker, but a commonality not shared yep. in the MC world. Yeah, so like just one center patch, or something yeah, like. Yeah, so that. that's that's like yeah, it's like a RC, right? I mean, that's what we call an RC, riding club. Uh, you got a lot of those. Some people think a riding club means that it, that it's automatically one way or another, but a riding club a lot of times is just a group of like-minded guys that want to have a little outfit, and they're not trying to step on anyone's toes, and they're not trying to claim a city or a state. And they just get a little center patch on there and, and they'll introduce themselves to everybody and support charity events. And, uh, you know, we just call them riding clubs out here. You, they're all over. The place. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think the greater question here that always comes is, should we have to go and, and, and get our blessing? That's typically what they're what he's trying to say is with no mc and no cube and i'm not calling and, myself you know that. it's it's not a bad idea and i'll just take because you, you know we got people all over the world watching this right so there's really no telling what the the dominant club in your area how they're going to react <laughs> to seeing a new patch and i'm not going to sit here and tell you no nah, just put it on and and you know just yeah, well, because yeah, because there's really no time i don't know who the dominant club is out there they might be meaner than hell and instantly hate you because you didn't get that blessing. I, what I always say is, you know, for at the very least, introduce yourself to some of the guys and let them know what you're doing and say, hey, man, you know, we're a group of veterans or whatever, you know, nurses, whatever. I've seen it all. And, and, and we ride to work together every day and we're going to get a patch. Is, is that cool? Or, you know, and normally they're not. Normally, the dominant clubs don't have an issue with that. You know, but if you don't say something, I. I can't tell you how that dominant club's going to react. I'm not going to pretend that it's going to be okay. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had one the other day ask me, uh, do Christian MCs get blessed by other Christian MCs? And I, I had to say, no, <laughs> that's that's not how that works. Um, but they try. They try. So maybe we're helping a little bit. Um, I talked to you about something earlier today, and uh you revealed some stuff that I just didn't really know went on uh, because I'm from the 99% side. And one of the things I said is one of the things I, I see in clubs today on the 99% side is, uh, you know, I would say a lot of things are eroding and the erosion stems from, and I say this, I've talked about this a little bit, um, that so many guys now are voting for their friends, their best friend. I like you. You're a cool guy. And I'm watching like 99% clubs for the most part don't make money. Like we're like, we, we did a, a show about a club today in the news section. The government took 30 tons of gold ore from them. Like mm -hmm. I have never seen 30 tons of gold ore and my motorcycle club is never going to see that. So we're not making money. Uh, but so many people are pushing for authority. They want, they need a president's patch, sergeant arms patch, road captain patch, and they'll get in these little circle jerk uh, kind of um, inside clusters inside the motorcycle club, and and they turn the politics into just hell 
yeah. uh, and they yeah. vote for one another and half the guys voting don't know what they what the, they, they, they know I think a lot of Americans shouldn't vote because they don't know what the hell they're voting about and um, <laughs> so so you damn sure I think a lot of uh, my club club people that I know shouldn't be voting uh, so <laughs> So what do you think about that? And, and my, you know, my take on it, you know, um, it's no secret. I've been in multiple clubs and I've seen it done, you know, both ways um, uh, where you've got a, a, an election every year or an election every few years. And then I've seen it where, you know, there's not elections um, and everybody is um, is appointed. Right. And you have like a like a military style leadership and, and people just kind of get appointed and and there's no elections and in my view you know um i'll just say this some of the oldest clubs some of the oldest clubs in the country and i, I said this to you earlier without mentioning any of their names some of the oldest clubs in the country are big clubs that you may have never heard of and some of these guys have had the same president for 20 years 30 years you know uh and those clubs seem to be very successful. And in my mind, when you join a club, you should know what you're getting into. And, and you're not joining it to change it. You're, you're, joining, you're joining it to make it better and to make it stronger. You're not joining it to change the way they do things. So if those are your ideas coming through the door, you should probably just find a different club. If you think you're going to get in there and get voted into a position and go, All right, hey, when I'm president, this is what we're then you should probably just not even be there because um because the fact is you're you're you should always be trying to build your club up and when you have elections the guys get pitted against one another and and then somebody loses and then they leave the club you know and i've seen all that you lose good brothers behind it um in my mind uh clubs work better with a with a military style leadership you know in my mind a, a dictatorship well, yeah, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you know, when you've got, when you've got a couple of guys that you know are going to keep everybody in line, you know, why change it? Well, why, why put some new guys in there that can't keep everybody in line and let everything fall apart? Um, and, and it works, you know, I mean, it, it works. Um, I could see, you know, if you had a club with, with thousands and thousands of people, maybe, you know, you would have to change that. And, and most of the clubs that, that have that type of leadership, there's still a vote somewhere at the top. You know what I mean? There's right. there's usually a group of people that are deciding, you know, who certain folks are. And then it all kind of trickles down. But uh, I, I really don't I like club elections. I think the club elections tear clubs apart. I, I really I, do. I, I would have argued that with you my entire career. Until I started, uh, until I, I things started to get to, to to change, and and I watching all these clubs lose their core what they were, and a lot of it, you know, what I attributed it to was you guys are thirsty. You're bringing in members in the club. You're not prospecting them. Anybody can get in. Clubs are selling patches, uh, and so you're gonna you're gonna be poisoned like that. But. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you when you made mention of that to me today, I mean, uh, just a light bulb went off because um, those clubs, you know, with guys that have been president for 20 and 30 years and stuff, those clubs are solid, man. Yeah, they are. They, they carry a lot of respect and, and people don't argue with the leadership, you know, and and those are the clubs that set the example for a lot of the other ones, you know, believe it or not. Um, so, you know, uh, I've learned, you know, in the very beginning, I would have, I was the other way. I was definitely, you know, elections every year. Everyone needs to say so. Everyone has a voice. But you get to a point where you're like, you know, that guy really does drink too much. <laughs> he doesn't know what the hell's going on around here. <laughs> Missed half the meetings. And wants, anyway, yeah. half the meetings and wants to to make a make a decision, but you got to bring him up to speed on what he's voting about. Yeah. 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 Um, what do you think uh, is the long term? Are, are we going to become like Australia? There's a lot of club violence going yeah. on and yeah. it doesn't seem to, to, to go away. So what do you what do you think about that? I don't think it'll happen because of the precedence that was already set. 
you know, the Fed's already tried to do that with a certain club, you know, uh, we all know, uh, uh, and it didn't work, you know, the, uh, the constitution affords us the right to wear this, you know, freedom of expression. And, um, you talk to any police officer, any federal agent, any of them, one of the first things they'll tell you is, oh, it's your constitutional right to wear that, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> that's what they'll, that's what they'll tell you. you know, I guess I got a frog in here. Well, I got a frog in here. But yeah, they, uh, that's what, every time I get pulled over, every time the police lecture me, uh, oh, it's, it's your, it's your right to wear it, you know, but no, nah, they can't take our rights away until they burn the constitution. You know, no, this is you not are- you're in Texas. You're seeing some crazy shit go down. Um, uh, this guy um, was wearing some tattoos, and they pulled him over a couple of years ago and made him take pictures of the tattoos. And uh, now we have some other stuff going on. Like uh, you guys can't, if you're in certain one percent clubs or a one percent club at all, you can't carry uh, your 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 weapons. Uh, you can't legally concealed carry. What what's going on with that down in Texas? So yeah, there's a lot of controversy over that. Um, there's been a lot of people with a club, and not even necessarily 1% clubs, but there's been a lot of club members. You get pulled over. You think you're legal. You think you're legal carry, and um, and you go to jail, and they take your gun, and, uh, and then you hire a lawyer, and, and then a year later, you know, and you get the charges dropped, and you get your gun back maybe or whatever, but but they basically just take you for the long ride, and, and it costs you a bunch of money and ruin your weekend, and, and you get a few sleepless nights out of it, you know, and if the charges stick, you know, then uh, then it could be real bad. But no, they'll uh, they they will try. But there's there's been a lot of controversy over it. And there was just a paper that I just got this morning. Somebody emailed to me uh, where something has come out of the seventh court, uh, the district court that is saying that uh, that they can no longer do that, that it's that it's unconstitutional. Um, that if it's a, if you're in a legal carry situation, they cannot take you, uh, to jail if you're not, uh, mm-hmm. in the process of, of criminal activity or are known for, uh, continuous. I think the actual words were continuous criminal activity that was put out by the seventh circuit court, but I'm actually, I'm going to get a lawyer that I know to read through all of that. And cause I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> But I want to get them to, to read through all of that and look at it and tell me. But I, yeah, I've seen guys go to jail um, for having a knife uh, on them in Texas. And in Texas, you can carry any kind of blade. I mean, there's they just changed the law, you know, a few years ago where you can carry swords. You know what I mean? But but I've seen a guy that, that had a uh, color zone, had a cut on that, that went to jail for a knife and they charged him with unlawful carry. You know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things that they'll, uh, you know, the, and it's not every department, but there's a lot of departments. There's a lot of officers that just they'll just make sure you go for a ride around here. Now you know I'm from Oklahoma, uh, but uh, I live in Georgia, and you know Oklahoma and Texas. I, I you know you guys have pretty uh, good laws there uh, for carrying and that sort of thing, but nothing like here. Uh, this this place is the wild wild west for real. Like you can carry brass knuckles here, switchblades. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Texas same way. Daggers. Uh, they just recently changed the law where you can now carry in parks, <laughs> and yeah. uh, only parks you can't carry in now are federal parks. So I mean, yeah. it, it, you so can it's have, basically like Texas. Yeah, you got all the stuff we got. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and and uh, but I do notice one thing uh, in Texas. Like you know, I I look at my gun thing uh, when I travel. And in Texas, when you get pulled over, I guess you got to tell the cop you're carrying. Um, yeah, if you've got a concealed carry permit, they'll know it when they pull your license, right? When they get your license and they and they run it, they'll get it flags. Um, but if you don't um, tell them, yeah, they say that that's a bad thing. They say that you're supposed to let them know if you have anything on you, you know, or in your possession. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I I suppose you're a Second Amendment guy. I would imagine. Um, yeah. So, you know, as a, a, a one percenter, do you see mm-hmm. do you see clubs as like the last bastion before government takeover? I mean, if the government comes down, do you think clubs will be any help? Do you get into any of that kind of talk or thinking at all? You know, I, I made some content about it a while back and it went viral. Um, I honestly think that. Most of the clubs have gotten to a point where they kind of just look after themselves. 
and uh you know if you're talking about like a like a you know a something when it all hits the fan type of scenario you know if that's what you're getting at yeah 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 um yeah I, I really i think that most of the clubs i know most of the guys i know have got their own little their own little places their own yeah. little uh buildings or or what have you and yeah and they'll probably take their little families out there and, and just kind of let the rest of the world burn that's my opinion i'm just saying i don't i don't see a whole lot of people sticking their neck out for for what's going on right now there's just there's not a lot of people that think any of it's righteous. And and if you've got a family and people that love you, are you going to stick your neck out? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think it would be, a, I think, I think it would, I think it would be terrible to see any kind of hits the fan scenario. And I just pray that it don't happen. So uh, we, we have a guy on it. He's uh, brought this up a few times. I guess he wants to challenge this, uh, the MC show. Uh, this might. Mm -hmm first time seeing him on here i don't know if i've seen him before uh is i don't know if he's one of our regulars or not i gotta ask this to hear him talk about the rights and constitution that one percenters have but then turn around and not grant those same things to a new club that wants to form as a club seems kind of hypocritical uh I, yeah. I, did i say that i that i wouldn't that i would hate on a new club man i actually said i'd buy them a beer and get to know them that's what i said right I'm not hating on the new clubs. I just don't recommend it. And yeah. and I can't speak for every club out there, but there's a lot of people out there that don't like seeing new clubs and it's instantly an issue. And it's not, I can't change the world. And if I could, I would, you know, but that is just, just how it is. You know? Um, uh, I'm not sure about this question here. I don't know what he said. If a guy is a one percenter, does he renew that status? Let him, <laughs> let let's make them prove it daily prove it to me i i, I don't yeah let's move on how do you think we prove it these, these are the guys these are the guys that think we're out like committing felonies every day right yeah yeah it's, it's Marie, didn't recognize the embroidery we need you in our classroom for okay i don't i don't uh i don't i don't always get to re read these <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that one was um so it it uh what do you think is going to be the future of clubs what do you what do you see as the near term and and 10 year future of clubs uh especially with crazy stuff coming on like in Europe they're trying to get rid of motorcycles altogether yeah they are um you know we actually had representatives in the United States that had proposed that did you know that no I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah I'm not going to tell you who, I don't, I don't, but, but no, you could actually Google who said we should get rid of motorcycles in the United States Congress. That'll blow your mind. But um, no, we've had people, they tried to, I want to say they tried to attach, attach that to that Green Act, you know, that they got through. They wanted to get that through. There's a lot of people that think that motorcycles are strictly recreational vehicles and they add to the carbon and blah, 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 you know, but hey, there's people like me and you know, that's all I do is ride a motorcycle. My wife, I bought her a nice car, you know, bought my, my son a car, but I don't even have a, a vehicle anymore other than a motorcycle. Every time I drive, it's, it's my motorcycle. Um, and, you know, in Asia, that's a huge form of transport all over Asia, uh, Philippines, all over. I mean, you, you're traveled um, all of the islands. It's a huge form of transport. I can't I can't see them just getting rid of motorcycles worldwide. I can see the technology changing, you know, uh, but but I can't see them getting rid of motorcycle. It's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, are you are you a dyed in the wool uh, Harley guy, or or do you ride anything, or or is it just Harleys for you? Hey man, if it's fun, I'll ride it. You know, I mean, to to be in the club, you have to own a Harley, right? And to uh, or 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 American made bike, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. have to be our, but an American made bike for most clubs. Um, and when you're in formation, that's what they want you to ride. But uh, I have owned about every make. The only kind of the only make that I can think of on the top of my head that I have never owned is Ducati and Triumph. Uh, but I have owned it like so many different models of motorcycles. There's a Suzuki Vulcan in, in my uh, shop right now. You know, uh, I mean, I, I just um, I like anything that's fun. If it's fast, if it's fun, if it looks cool. 
you know, I, I don't, I'm not prejudiced toward motorcycles or people, you know. I don't know why these people want to uh, call me when I'm on. Normally, when this guy calls me, he wants to ask a question. What's up, man? You see me online? Yeah, what's up? You got a question? I'm good. Yeah, I got a question. How you doing? I'm good. What's up? All right. Here's my question. The gentleman that you have. I'm, I'm the one that presented that question. To M, uh, I'm MC show. Oh, that's you. So, yes, that's me. And that's new for you so, then. So I didn't I was, know that. So, so, yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't personally presenting that question to him, but he does represent the OMC. Because he's no, he's that. actually he represents himself right now. He's talking about himself. He's not talking about okay. a club. He's a one percenter. Okay. He's talking about himself. Okay, but the question I presented, as far as when he talks about constitutional rights, mm -hmm. all I was all I was saying was with OMCs, if 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 you don't have to go to in your local town or your local city and go to a police department. To say, okay, we want to exist here. If you don't have to do that because you have a constitutional right to exist, then my thing is, is that if a new club wants to pop up or a new club wants to 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 exist, then why should they have to come to an OMC to get permission to want to exist? All right, I'll, I'll let him answer that. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, not not all yeah. not you. all dominant clubs regard themselves. Listen, he's answering you. He's he's answering you right now. I, I, I'll let him finish if he wants to finish. Oh, he, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, MC Show. Uh, oh, okay. What, what you want me to repeat it? Oh, well, what MC Show was saying was he wasn't trying to attack you personally. Hey, oh, yeah. No, I feel that. No, I feel that. Hey, I appreciate that, too, MC Show. I appreciate you. Thank you for clarifying that. I, I really didn't feel attacked. I just wanted to clarify that. You know, and I don't speak for for any club, but but not always is is the uh, dominant club even an OMC. You know, I've I've seen towns where the dominant club is wearing a, a thirteen. You know, um, they don't even have a a one percent uh, diamond on. But um, and just because you've got a, a one percent diamond on doesn't mean that you're a felon in an outlaw. It really doesn't. Things have changed a whole lot. Um, I'm not a felon. You know what I mean? I don't plan on ever being a felon and I'm almost 50, you know? So in my mind, I like to pay attention to the guys that have been doing this thing for years and years and years and never been to prison. Right. And so, mm -hmm. and, and they're, you know, be smart about it. Um, as far as asking the police permission, here's, I'll tell you this. If none of the police know who you are and you pop up a new club and start riding around, the police are going to pull you over and check you. They're going to pull you over. They're going to run you for warrants. They're going to search you. You're going to be on the side of the road for a minute. They're going to be like, who, are these, who is this new guy over there? <laughs> and, uh, and they're going to call on the radio. Have y'all heard of these guys? Who are these guys? Now, it's kind of it's kind of funny, but it, you know the, the clubs out there that play patch police, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> they're going to pull up on you. And they're going to be like, who are you? Who do you know? Who blessed you? Who told you to be here? And then they're going to get on their phone. Yeah. And they're going to call everybody. And they're going to go, hey, do you know these dudes over here? <laughs> it's funny. But that's why we call them patch police, because they act just like the police do. Everybody's going to want to know who you are. If you start a new club, that's just going to happen. It's just people are going to check you. There's nothing I can do about it. It might be a a, a, a three piece club. It might be the police. It might, it, you know, um, I knew a guy with with a with a riding club. I almost said the name of the club. I knew a guy with a riding club years ago that was meaner than hell, and he had one patch on it. He checked everybody in town. I, I I've seen that. I have seen that. Hey, great. Do you know these new dudes right over here? No, I rolled up on them today. <laughs> you know, it's, you just never know who's going to be the one to roll up on you. Being the new guy is tough because yeah. nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who your friends are. Nobody knows what you're about. You know, it's 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 tough being the new guy. I've done it. It's rough. It's real hard. You're, you're going to get checked. And I, I wish that this world wasn't like that, but it's just how it is. <laughs> uh question from Carney Vanguard. How do you feel about co ed and mixed race clubs? 
Uh, I'm a big fan of mixed mixed race clubs. Um, I'm a huge fan. Pretty much every club has gone to mixed race. You really can't find a big club anymore that is solid one race or another. Uh, that, that I mean, I I think I could name maybe two on the top of my head, and and I know a lot of clubs. Um, pretty much everybody is mixed now, and I'm a huge fan of it. Um, as far as mixed gender, now I, I mean I'm. I'm going to be real upfront with you. I personally wouldn't join a club that was mixed gender mm -hmm. and I wouldn't try to change my club to be mixed gender. You know what I mean? That's for me that it just doesn't work. I've, I've seen people try it and it, and it just doesn't work. Um, there, there's a reason I'm in a 1% club and, and that's, that's one of the reasons is, you know, it's, it's, it's a man's kind of club. It's a man's man. He's, you know, red blooded American and, and you can call me whatever you want, but but there's there's no women at the table passing down any orders at all. It is what it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I kind of feel the same way. I uh, I'm in a, a huge mixed race club, and um, it's been mixed race since uh, we started in '74. Uh, they 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 started forming in '72. They officially announced in '74, and by '75, uh, it was a mixed race club. But um, um, I wouldn't want to be in a um, uh, particularly a mixed gender club where you might have a female president or something. And it's not that I don't believe that a female president wouldn't be um, uh, a, a righteous leader. It's just not something I would want in a motorcycle club, I guess. Um, well, hey, like you said earlier, I don't cuss and things like that, right? So I was raised in a household where you didn't cuss around females or children. Mm -hmm. And and when I'm around ladies, I, I act a certain way. And when I'm around the guys, I act another way. You know what I mean? It's and the way I don't want to be around women when I'm when I'm being, you know, with the guys. You know what I mean? You, you, and yeah. guys need that guy time. Someone like me, especially, I need that guy time. And I don't need the women judging me because of what I do or say around the men, you know what I mean? So that's, that's one of the main reasons that motorcycle clubs were all men clubs to begin with or all women clubs. There's, there's all female clubs that go back years and years and years because the ladies needed somewhere to go where they could talk to each other without the men hearing it. And the men needed the same thing. You know, I can, uh, I can remember when I built, I have my own clubhouse down below my office. So up here is the dragon's nest and below is the dragon's lair. And if you're ever in the area, please stop by. I have a, uh, I did this as I got older. Uh, when I got this studio, and uh, I didn't want anybody below, above or below me because I have to make, you know, I have to make videos and stuff. And I had a church above me, and that that was hell. So when I got this new place, uh, there was a, I have a little like bird nest up here on top, and there's this uh, huge like warehouse below me. And I was thinking, man, uh, I don't want anybody to be underneath me making noise. And the guy said, well, you know, you can have the whole thing. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, what the hell would I do with, you know, yeah, a, 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 a four bay warehouse? What the hell would I do with that? And, yeah, party. and then the idea, you know, I could make videos down there and I could have a set up like a clubhouse and have people over and interview them. And then I said, clubhouse. Ah! So. Yeah, yeah. So Art. when I took this place, uh, there was a stage and uh, in it, and, and um, um, there it was uh, next door. Uh, I have a, this big container out front, and in the container was this octagonal, octagonal stage that's about four, and a, four or five feet tall. And I looked at that, and it, it's got carpet on it, and I said, oh, my God, a stripper stage. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled it in, and uh, I set it up. So my woman comes walking in and she says, she, she's looking, oh, I like your clubhouse. She looked over and she saw that stage. And I, first thing she said was, so I can see the beginning of the end for you and I. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, oh, so you're going to have a stripper stage in here? I said, honey, that's a table. She said, she said a table with, with, a table with carpet table with carpet on it. And I said, yeah, that's a table. There's no, there's no stripper pole or anything in this table. So my, my, the father of my motorcycle club comes and uh, he comes to visit and um, he wants to see the, the dragon's lair. 
And uh, he comes in, she's there, and he sits down and he goes, man, I, I love your stripper stage. And I just looked at him like, how the hell did you drop this dime on me? And she's like, I told you it wasn't a table. I knew it was. a." So I say that to say there has to be a separation. There has to be a separation. There has to be a separation. You know, that doesn't mean we're in there doing all the things we're not supposed to be doing, but we're in there saying things that you don't need to hear in no, behaving no. ways. If, if you saw us behave that way, you'd never think of us the same. It's, you know. no. one, one of my friend's wives, we had we had something going on, and she she said, and my friend said, I was like, oh, my God. My friend said, no, no, no. If that's the reaction a good woman has, we're doing the right things. Oh, there's got to be. I like him. You're going to have to introduce me to that guy. I like him. <laughs> motioned his girl on out. And, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 have to, we have to have uh, some separation. So yeah. I, I absolutely believe yeah. in the separation. Yeah. They used to call it gentleman's club, right? And then, <laughs> that's and, what they called it. Right? They called it a gentleman's club because – when you walk through the door, you're a gentleman. Well, once you get on the other side of the door, it's whatever, you know. But you're it's a gentleman when you hit the, it's a gentleman know? when you hit the door. It's a club when you get on the other side. That's uh, right. I just to ask, what do you think of female one percenters? I never met one. Have you? Uh, I have not, but I saw it on the. I reported on it on the news. So there's a yeah. chapter. It seems. No, I don't. I don't have an opinion. I never met one. If I ever meet one, I'll give you my opinion. You know, never met one. Um. So, you know, we've been on here an hour and I've just really enjoyed the show. I mean, we we got a pretty pretty tremendous audience. It's really cool, man. Um I would ask you this. Um why a one percenter for you? Why why for me, a club versus anything else? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the question. I uh I've I've you know I've done I've done other clubs, man. You know, most people that are in one percent clubs start off like in a mom and pop club that's normally how it works and then you kind of you find your way into a one percent club and, and that's what happened for me um it's just where i fit in it's just where i fit in um that's that's the best way to answer it you know the guys think more like me and uh and it's just uh it's just it's just a closer you know idea for the for the world that i want to live in you know, um, what, what I've tried to be other way. I tried 99 world. Yeah. It didn't, didn't fit in as well. And, and in the 1% world, everybody loves me. You know, uh, I fit in better in the 1% world. I'm a better one percenter than I was a 99. What is a one percenter? A one percenter is righteous, right? Somebody that'll stand on their, on what they said. Somebody that'll stand on business. Somebody that doesn't run. It's not a coward. Right. You don't talk about people behind their back. Right? You don't backdoor people. Right. If you say anything about somebody, you're willing to back it up. However, it needs to be. However, it needs to be done. You know, one percenters don't typically have elections like we were talking about earlier. You know, everything just runs a lot smoother because everybody knows their place and nobody is trying to stab you in the back to get your job. You know what I mean? Because everybody knows what their job is. And it's hmm. just a more professional way of doing things, in my opinion. And I know, I know there's a lot of people that'll disagree with that, but it, I, it just, for me, it just is a more professional way of doing things, and I fit in better. Uh, uh, Nacho Mike said I should have caught it a midnight stripper stage, and it would have not have been a problem. Hey, let me uh, ask you about this shoot a deuce thing that you were doing. Are you still doing that? And yeah, yeah, I'm still doing that. Uh, still selling the t-shirts. Uh, I still talk about it from time to time, but yeah, that whole campaign is actually taken off pretty well uh, in this area. Uh, we're seeing more and more people that instead of doing the the straight salute, you know, shooting a deuce and and putting it up good and high, and it's just a respect thing to let people know that uh, I'm not in your area trying to cause problems, man. I'm just riding my motorcycle. Don't don't shoot me off my bike. Just shoot a deuce at me, right? I'm right. trying to be cool, right? And that, and it's just a respect thing. And, it, you know, it's actually, like I said, it's taken off pretty well. We're seeing more and more of it. I have people sending me videos of, uh, from all the way up in Tennessee and, and uh, Illinois and all kinds of places where people are shooting a deuce. So, uh, you know, it's just an effort to get people to put the guns down and put their hands up. 
You know what I mean? If you got a problem with somebody, put your hands up. You, you don't need a gun in your hand also, you know? Yeah, I remember when you got on this, uh, there was a whole lot of um, uh, stuff going on, a lot of shootings and stuff, and you came up with this shoot a deuce idea uh, when you're riding your motorcycle down the street, shoot a deuce instead of shoot a gun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I I guess we can go to your your shop, uh, Shopify, my or your uh, hyphen favorite hyphen biker uh, dot my Shopify dot com and yeah. get your shoot a deuce line, which is about you. You you you've been talking about peace on the biker set for a minute, man. Yeah, man. Um, every every video I do, I try to end you know with peace and love. Uh, yeah. that's really the main message. I just want people to think and, uh, use your head, be smart. You know, don't, don't throw your life away out here trying to kill each other. There's no sense in, it, you know, all of us should be able to go home to our families, no matter what you're wearing on your back. Oh my goodness. Uh, that, well, that was, uh, that was something else. I like that. It's uh, profound, but it's, but it's, you know, it's, we're all, man, I've been in a lot of different clubs and we're all the same. We are all the same. Every club, and I know there's people that you should only be in one club. But you'll hardly meet a one percenter that hasn't been in multiple clubs. But um, we're all the same. Every clubhouse I party at, everywhere I go, I start drinking with people. Everybody's the same. We all like the same music. We all think the same. We we all ride the same. You know, we all like to party the same. We have the same taste in everything. And and then you know we want to fight each other. Uh, with guns, it just doesn't make sense to me. I've always been a put your hands up kind of guy, you know. Dr well, draw a circle in the dirt. I tell you, I just, I just really want to thank you for giving my audience a chance to get to know you. One of my audience uh, said that you need, you need to get on Facebook. You're a TikTok guy. I mean, you need to get on YouTube. You're a TikTok guy, and we'd like to see you on YouTube. But you are on YouTube. I uh, am. I've, I've only got about two thousand followers. I haven't had that account for very long, but yeah, I got a YouTube account. So you guys can find him on your favorite biker on YouTube, your favorite biker on TikTok, and where else are you? Uh, Instagram. And Instagram. Instagram. And yeah. you were saying you were wanting to get a podcast going, and I, I just want to offer this to you. If you need any help uh, with putting a podcast together or, or whatever, you know, equipment or whatever you need to know about or whatever. I, I just, I'm a phone call away, man. Man, I really appreciate it. What, what I really, what I really need is a producer. I need to hire a producer and, uh, and I've actually kind of been looking, but yeah, if there's anybody out there, you know, uh, in the Dallas area, uh, East Texas, uh, Northeast Texas, Arkansas, I'm looking for a producer, you know? And so I, I need someone that I can have regular meetings with, that can uh, help me to take my content to the next level. So, yeah. There you go. Hey, listen, man, thank you for your service. Thank you so much for the afternoon with me. Thanks for coming on such short notice. I yeah. am definitely a fan. Uh, I feel really uh, enriched by the presence, uh, and I feel enriched by uh, the 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 um, uh, counsel you've given me. I appreciate that very much. And uh, I, I'd like to count you as a friend, man, if you ever need hey, it. Yeah. Uh, Hey, I appreciate it. And I feel the same way. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. And uh, and I appreciate you having me on today. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Uh, absolutely. You have a standing invitation. Uh, if you ever want to come on and do Biker News with me, which uh, you for one percenters never want to do that, but <laughs> you can. Welcome to come <laughs> I'll to watch. Come I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll watch. The show anytime, man. Yeah. I appreciate right. it. Love, honor, and respect, man. Take care. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, say that again. Peace. You got. I got. I got. Peace and love. Peace there and you love. go. Thanks a lot, man. Bye bye. Oh my goodness, man. Uh, it was that was awesome, K Wayne. That was really awesome, bro. That was awesome. Uh, K Wayne's in the background running the studio. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. So uh, uh, that uh, that made my day, man. I'm 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 just uh, I'm I'm just glowing, man. I just feel so cool. Uh, we're gonna have some really awesome people like uh, like your favorite biker Gray on on the show, Gray One Percenter. Uh, we're gonna have so many cool guys on here, man. And I just uh, I hope you guys are ready for a new season, man. We're, we're gonna talk. We're, you know, we're gonna. You guys have made this show the number one biker news show in all the world. 
and uh, we appreciate it. To all my new uh, subscribers, Bill Mathers, take care, brother. Uh, Aztec Cruiser, take care. For all my new subscribers, thank you so much. I'm Black Dragon. Listen, uh, if you guys um, want to help the show, you can hit us up at dollar sign biker prez, dollar sign biker prez, P-R-E-Z. All my books are available at blackdragonsgear.com. And, of course, if you need to talk to me, you can hit me at clarity.fm forward slash black hyphen dragon. Um, and uh, we uh, absolutely appreciated you guys today. And God bless you all. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. I would love to hear your two cents in the comments section below. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, the President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the Motorcycle Club Nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book.
a thumbs up. Like Dragon's Bike at TV at his best. Oh yeah, and don't forget to get his prospect Bible book. So proud of him. Man, he just don't know. He's a real, a real legend. <laughs> and y'all know it, and I know it. That's right, Black Dragon. That's right. Glad I met you, my friend. Black Dragon. I'm the Midnight Ghost Rider. The V, y'all. Love you, Black Dragon. Black Dragon. Peace. And uh, get skinny. Get skinny. Get skinny. Get skinny. Like and share. Like and share. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.